whatever the circumstances of our death, God has arranged it from all eternity. It is a matter for us to glorify God through our death. But in one condition, we must follow our Lord. As he said to St. Peter, follow me. We have to follow our Lord. He is the only way to have that good little while, the first one, our life, and the last little while, our death. We must unite ourselves to his death. That is how we glorify God. And this is the grace that I ask of you, my dear faithful. Prepare the two little whiles well. Imitate our Lord, his life, and his death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear faithful, as I was reading today's Gospel, in which we witnessed the vocation of the Apostles, I remembered those few words I just quoted to you, spoken by our dear Father Yagan a few weeks ago on April 25th, by which, without knowing it, he announced his near future. Follow me. Follow me into blessed eternity and glorify me through your death. These are the words he certainly heard from the mouth of the Lord 13 days ago. And you know, it is clear, it is very clear that God wanted to take our young Father Yagan from us to teach us a lesson. A lesson about which St. Alphonsus tells us in his sermon on this Sunday. Nothing is more certain than death, but nothing is more uncertain than the hour of death. And you know, that's what I want to talk to you about today. I know this is not a very happy topic. This is not a topic we like to listen to, but you know, sometimes we must talk about it. So as not to live in illusion, as so many people are living in. And the departure of our dear Father encourages us to make this meditation. So let's do it. And we, we must first remember that death is inevitable. Let us listen to some words of St. Alphonsus. It is appointed unto men once to die, says St. Paul to the Hebrews. The decree has been passed for each of us. We must all die. St. Cyprian says that we are all born with the halter on the neck. Hence, every step we make brings us nearer to the gibbet. For each of us, the gibbet shall be the last sickness, which will end in death. All things future, which regard men no living, are uncertain, but death is certain. All other good, goods and evils, said St. Augustine, are uncertain. Death only is certain. It is uncertain whether such an infant shall be rich or poor, whether he shall enjoy good or ill health, whether he shall die at an early or at an advanced age, but it is certain that he shall die. Though he be a son of a peer or of a monarch, and when the hour arrives, no one can resist the stroke of death. The same St. Augustine says, fires, waters, and the sword are resisted. Kings are resisted. Death comes. Who resists it? We may resist conflagrations, inundation, the sword of enemies, and the power of princes. But who can resist death? A certain king of France said in his last moments, Behold, with all my power, 
I cannot make death wait for a single hour. No. When the term of life has arrived, death does not wait even a moment. As Job said, Thou hast appointed his bounds, which cannot be passed. This, my dear faithful, is the truth that applies to all men, without exception. The day, the day will come when we have to leave this earth. The day will come when our souls separate from our bodies and presents itself before God to receive the wages of its existence. And we know that. We know that. But what is incredible, St. Alphonsus say also not, is that although everyone, everyone knows that death is inevitable, many imagine and live as if it will never come. But, oh God, said St. Alphonsus, we all know that we shall die. The misfortune is that we imagine death as distant, as if it were never to come. And therefore, we lose sight of it. We know, we know that death will come. It's not a happy thought. But we forget about it, because precisely it's not a happy thought. And that is a problem. That is a problem. And therefore we live as if death does not exist. We know it's our path. But we are living as if death does not exist. And St. Alphonsus points out the folly of this attitude. Tell me, beloved brethren, if instead of preparing for his approaching death, a person condemned to die was on his way to the place of execution, to employ the few remaining moments of his life in admiring the beauty of the houses as he passed along, in thinking of balls and comedies, in uttering immodest words and detracting his neighbors, would you not say that the unhappy man had either lost his reason or that he was abandoned by God? And are, you, are not you on the way to death? Why then do you seek only the gratification of the senses? Why do you not think of preparing your accounts, which you shall one day, and perhaps very soon, <clears throat> have to render at the tribunal of Jesus Christ? Souls that have faith <clears throat> leave to the fools of this world the care of realizing a fortune on this earth seek you to make a fortune for the next life, which shall be eternal. The present life must end, and end very soon. Ah, brethren, says St. Alphonsus, if you wish to live well, and to have your accounts ready for that great day on which your destiny to eternal life or to eternal death must be decided, and therefore, during the remaining days of your life, to live with death before your eyes. Oh, how correct are the judgments, how well directed the actions of those who form their judgments and perform their actions with death before their view. The remembrance of death destroys all attachment to the goods of this earth. Let the end of life be considered, said St. Lawrence, and there will be nothing in this world to be loved. Yes, all the riches, honors, and pleasures of this world are easily despised by him who considers that he must soon leave them forever, and that he shall be thrown into the grave to be the food of worms. These are strong words, impactful words of St. Alphonsus. But you know, these words only put before our eyes the great reality of our life. Sooner or later, we'll have to leave, leave this world, leave this earth. 
But you know what should make us think even more and decide to really take advantage of each moment of our life is that the time of our departure can be at any time. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, we don't know. Nothing is more certain than death, but nothing is more uncertain than the hour of death. And you know, our Lord wants us and wants us a lot of times in the gospel. He will come like a thief, like a thief, unexpectedly. Let's read the gospel of St. Matthew. Understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. <clears throat> Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. And in the Gospel of St. Mark, we can read, Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he, might, he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, to us, keep awake. Keep awake. This is... Maybe the, the biggest, the greatest advice of our Lord in the gospel. Keep awake. That is, keep in the state of grace. Be prepared. Because I will come like a thief during the night when you are not expecting me. You know, we are sometimes tempted to believe that the time of our death is not for now. But we have time. And we organize our life accordingly. And we don't do all the good we could do. And we postpone, maybe, our conversion to later. We have time. Later. Tomorrow. In a week, in a month, in a year. I will do a retreat. I will do a general confession. We don't know. Maybe today is a day. Maybe tomorrow. As it was for our dear Father Yagan. You know, this is a complete illusion against which, which our Lord has warned us with a special parable, this illusion of later, I have time. The land of a rich man, says Jesus, produced abundantly a wealthy man. And he thought to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be happy. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? Terrible words. You fool from the mouth of God. You fool. Why? Because you think you have time. This is the reason you're a fool. We are a fool. I'm a fool. Because we all think we have time. It's not for today, tomorrow. Few years. Few years from now. Illusion. And this man thought he would live many more years. Well, what an illusion. This very night, he presented himself before God to give an account of his existence. So my dear faithful, obviously, we cannot fall in this kind of illusion. Later, I have time. Tomorrow, next year, in 10 years, I will convert. I will be a saint. 
I will really, really fight, struggle for holiness. No, not tomorrow. Today, my dear faithful. This is the only thing we have in our hand. Today, the now, the present. You know, the departure of our dear father Yagan encourages us really to take the words of our Lord and St. Alphonsus seriously. Really to take advantage of the now, the present we have in our hands. And you know, it's not a matter of living in constant anxiety and fear. I don't want you to leave the chapel shaking by fear. No, this is not the goal. This is not the goal. What's the purpose? The purpose is to, is to keep awake, to be ready. Today, tomorrow, in 10 years, in 50 years, it doesn't matter. We have to be ready. I have to be ready. You have to be ready. Because we never know when the Lord will knocking our door, telling us, come, come, now. I'm not so prepared. No, now. Not tomorrow, now. It would have been, it would have been very good to be, I don't know, informed a little time before. Now. No. So let's think, let's meditate about that. I know this is a grace. We will ask Our Lady today that she help us really to keep awake. That is to be always in a state of grace, always trying to improve our holiness every day, each day, fighting, struggling for holiness, not leaving it for tomorrow, for next week, for next year. No. Keep awake. So that when our Lord come and knocks our door, we'll be prepared and we will be sharing forever his happiness in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the God, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.